Hi guys, it's Christy with the Sweetly Life YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to make a quick video just showing you how we did the wood wall. I've had a lot of questions and I just thought it'd be easier to make a video than to type it all out. I am not quite done with our mantle yet with the decorating, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you. This wood wall is actually made with pallets. We, our carpet guys came yesterday. I'm so excited we got carpet! Um, and asked me where we got our shiplap from. And when I told them that it was pallets, they were actually very shocked. So in this video, I'm going to show you kind of a general idea of how we did it. And I will show you the exact stains that we did use. And if you have any questions, you'll be able to comment below. Um, just make sure that you like the video and that you subscribe. It's usually my kids' stuff, but they would love for you to subscribe. Okay, here we go. Okay, first of all, ignore the garage. We are in the middle of remodeling or redoing part of the house. Um, first, we started with pallets. If you live in Manuka, Ace sells them for $2. You just go up to the counter and tell them you want some pallets. They'll tell you where to pick them up. Um, try to get some that have as straight of boards as you can possibly find. Like this one, for instance, on the top, you can see how it's bowed. We weren't able to use that one. Um, that's why it's not cut off here. Um, we have extras because we're going to make some other cool stuff. And when I make the other cool stuff, we'll make videos for that too. When my husband used his sawzall to cut through the nails. You can see where he cut through right here. You could also pry them off. I am going to warn you that it's kind of time consuming and try not to crack them. However, if you crack them, that's fine. It just gives them more character. When we're done, I'll show you some of the cracked ones inside. And I actually thought those looked better. Um, so we used the sawzall, we cut them off. Then I took a hole punch, or nail punch, this little gadget right here. Sorry, that's blurry because it's trying to see things behind you there. Um, we put that in to the wood. Hold on one second, let me grab a piece and show you an example here. Like if the nail was sticking out right here, we stuck it on this side. So the head of the nail would be on the other side of the wood. I took this handy little thing, just nailed it, hit it a couple times, and it would pop out. If it didn't pop out, I would then flip the wood over, take this thing. I called it thing because I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest with you. Um, I know it's some kind of electrical thing my husband uses. And I clip onto the nail, pull it up, and it was pulled out. Then when I was done with that, I sanded all of them. You can do this with just regular sandpaper, a, you know, sand like sponge. My husband has a cool tool I was able to use, so it made it much easier for me. But you just lightly sand it. You're not going to sand it down to complete um, perfection because you don't want that. You just want to make sure no pieces of wood are sticking out. So I sanded this, I would sand this side, the edge on both sides, and then each end. Now, I'm going to tell you that it is very important that you sand or that you sand and stain both edges on each edge of this. Sorry, my finger is all dirty from that tool. Um, and each end. I'll show you when we go inside exactly why because I learned that on one of them. Oh, oops, but I got it fixed. Um, once you're done sanding, then it's staining time. That's fun. That's the fun time. And that's the most important thing for me to show you guys. These are the three colors I used. So I use Minwex, I think it's called Chico Bean. And this one here. And the English Chestnut. Okay, another thing I learned while doing this project, don't use this. Don't use any, don't buy anything that has a polyurethane already in it, unless you want all your fingers to stick together. It was horrible. Like literally, all my fingers would be stuck together and I'd have to keep going in and washing my hands and it was just really obnoxious and very time consuming. So make sure you do not buy any with the polyurethane already in it. Um, another thing I purchased, I'm looking around to see if I can find it out here, um, from Ace, is they have a bag of rags. Um, last time I was at the Ace in Manuka, it was on an end cap, oh there it is. It was on an end cap. And it is perfect for using for your staining. They're called wiping cloths. I think it was like $2 for the whole bag. I just would cut them up into smaller pieces, take them, dip them in the stain, and then just go over your wood. The best part about this project is it does not have to be perfect. The less perfect it is, 
the better it turns out. So I think that's everything that we did out that I did outside in the garage. I'm going to take you back inside. Okay, now if you're concerned that the old holes from the nails will look stupid, they don't. It actually looks really, really cool. So you're going to leave those holes open. You don't have to fill them with anything. You don't have to stain over them. Um, my husband used a nail gun with finishing nails. That's what's right there in order to put it into the wall. He had to go through the wall and find all the studs and know right where to nail them into. So he actually um, drew a line on all the studs. So he would know exactly where those nails had to go in each time he put a new board in. Also, another thing to mention, as you will see back there, we painted the wall black. I highly suggest you do that because it will not be perfect everywhere. Areas will be showing through. Um, so do a black or a dark color. Same thing right here. See how it's, you can see kind of through there a little bit. So you want to make sure when you see through there that you can't obviously tell from far away. Um, my example I was going to show you on why you had to do the end pieces, I think it's covered up by the mantle now. <laughs> um, oh, here, like this. I'm going to have to touch this up. See, because everything's not going to be perfect. Some of them are going to bow out a little bit. Um, so that's why you want to make sure. Well, I don't know why that just kind of changed colors on me like that. Um, why you want to make sure that you get both sides and both ends stained. So when you put it up, you're, you're good to go. Um, the mantle, Jeff made. I'll do another video on that once he tells me how he did it. <laughs> um, and we did come all the way to the fireplace with the wood, as you can see in here. He did end up deciding to um, trim it out. We did look it up. By law, you have to have eight inches from your fireplace before you can start the wood. So don't plan on going all the way up to your fireplace or you're going to be against code. And when you go to sell your house, that's not going to be cool. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, it's, and we did not do any rhyme or reason when we put them on the wall, except for they have to be the same widths. So when we first started the project, I kind of made it like a, it was like a just jigsaw puzzle where I put all the ones that were in the same width in the same pile we thought we were going to have a lot of leftovers, and then my husband actually got a table saw for his birthday from, you know, a special wife and some really awesome kids. And then he was actually able to cut them to size, so we didn't end up having a lot of leftovers. If you can't do that, you will have a lot of leftovers. Some of the leftovers we have, I'm actually going to do in our bathroom powder room on the wall behind the toilets, because I think that'll look really cool. Um, I'm also going to make some shelves for this room. We have this big wall right over here that um, doesn't have anything on it. So I'm going to make some shelves for that room or for there. And we're also, I think Jeff is going to try to make a coffee table and an entertainment center out of the pallet wood also. Therefore, when we stain it, it will go right with the wall and everything will match together. Oh, and then he also did, he trimmed the windows out um, with trim and then he just kind of you just literally butted the wood right up to it so I think it came out really cool I think I covered everything if I didn't like I said leave me a question in the comments and I'll get right back to you and if you could like the video and share the video and subscribe to the channel the kids and I would greatly appreciate it it's gonna be a lot of kids videos but I will be adding also a lot of do-it-yourself stuff. Thanks so much and have a great day.